Hey everyone, this is the Untwisted Voice. Thanks for stopping by and watching my video. If you can take a second, can you please hit the like button? And I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate that too. And thanks again for stopping by. What I want to talk to you today about is getting a job in early recovery or in recovery in general. Some of the obstacles that you may encounter in getting that job. I know I countered a few obstacles in my day and let me tell you something, it was hard to reintegrate back into the workforce, especially in early recovery. The first thing I wanna talk about, if you have benefits at work and you're able to stay off work for three, four, six months, whatever it may be, take full advantage of that. Take advantage of those benefits that allow you to stay off work so you can work on your program and get a really, really great foundation when it comes to your recovery. I would strongly suggest you do that. But for myself, I didn't have that luxury. I worked in the restaurant business. We had benefits, but we didn't have any disability insurance. So I was unable to take advantage of that. So I was on general welfare. I was making $625 per month. If it wasn't for my brother helping me out with my living expenses, I would have been out in the street to put it lightly. I have really, really minimum money. So getting back to work was really important to me because I barely had any money even to go to meetings at night to take the bus. The first concern I had and how I got over it was my work history. I had really shitty work history. My last year of drinking, I had probably three, four, maybe six jobs in 12 months. So put that on a resume and see how that does, how it works for you when you go out and look for a job. It doesn't work too well, but I was, can, I was I was really big on being honest and being forward whoever gave me a job interview. So I made a resume to the best of my ability. I put it out there. My work history was not great and I had no references. I had no references. I just went out and started hammering the payment in those days. It wasn't online like it is now. And just started going for job after job after place after place, dropping resumes. And you know something? One day, it was in the morning, I got a call to come for an interview. But one of the penalties I took was going back into the restaurant business that I worked for low wage. So what did I do? I talked to my sponsor and he said, keep an open mind, Terry, and go for it. So what I did is I took that job. It was $7.25 an hour. When I quit my job, or did I get fired? I can't even remember what happened to my last job. I was making about thirty-five dollars to $38,000 a year, and I went down to seven dollars and 25 cents per hour that was minimum wage at that time about 25 25 years ago here in ontario it was about seven dollars and 25 cents so work history was a problem but i put the program in motion and got out there and did the legwork so if you're discouraged about your work history do the best you can somebody will give you an opportunity don't let it stop you so getting out there and participating in the job search being online you will get somebody who will take a chance with you you really will another great way of doing it is go for those workplace uh, placement agencies we have one here called Ransat there's a number of them that's really great so you go there you do your interview and they'll place you in jobs so you can start getting some work experience that's a great way of doing it I did that too and it worked very well it really really well did it gave you a variety of jobs that you could do and you sort of got a taste of a little bit here a little bit here and if you didn't like it you could just quit that was the great thing about it. You could change jobs and no one held it against you. So placement agencies are really great place to go to too if you're looking for employment. Another one is the unemployment office. Talk to friends, Facebook, wherever it may be. There's lots and lots of work. If you're willing to work, you can get a job. Another thing is, am I going to relapse if I start working? Is the stress going to drive me nuts? I can't answer that question because I'm not you. I know myself, I really enjoyed it going back to work making a paycheck, starting to feel good about myself again. So was I going to relapse at work? I wasn't sure. But if you think the job that you're doing or the job that you did before going back into that career may make you relapse or may stress you out, it's more than likely not the right thing to do. Maybe you need to go and get retrained or try something new. So if you're having those tendencies already that you're afraid to go back into that employment, that, that way of life that you had before, 
maybe you should change that and that's okay. I was in the restaurant business and I always come from an old school, like no one forced me to drink. I wasn't afraid if there's alcohol around me, but that's not for everybody. That's really not. When you work in the kitchen, in the restaurant, you're kind of away from the alcohol and you can kind of leave, not going through the bar. So I felt really safe, but that's not for everybody. It's really not. And another concern, are you going to be able to be responsible, be prompt and be reliable? Well, just to give you an example how that worked out for me, my boss out of the blues came up to me and he says, Terry, you are one of the best workers I have. You're reliable. You don't have any drama in your life. I can't believe he even said that. So alcoholics generally are really good workers. We really, really are. We're conscientious about our work. We show up on time. We're team players because we want to be a part of life again. And working is a great thing to do. And my father used to tell me, Terry, go back to work and start talking to regular people for you're not always talking about recovery. You can talk about, to, you know, about sports, politics, whatever it may be, but you can go back in there and you can talk to some regular people who are not alcoholics. He always told me that. He was in the program for a number of years and I think that was great advice. Just talking to some regular people sometimes lightens, lightens me up. And another thing that I made sure of when I went back into the workplace is that not to get a job that was so consuming that I forgot about my recovery. That was a concern of mine. Was I going to find a job that I could work around my recovery program? And because it was very important for me to keep going to my meetings. It was very important to me to do that. Talk to my sponsor, you know, get active, keep stay, stay active in the program. So I found a job that worked around that, that the schedule, like I didn't tell my boss that, that I went to meetings, but I told them, you know, I asked them if I could work in these, this time frame, and he said it was okay. And another concern is, do you have to tell your boss you're in a program of recovery? Absolutely not. You don't have to tell anybody you're in a program of recovery. You don't. And I'd recommend you not telling them. I recommend that. I did it once and it didn't really go over that well. They looked at me like something was wrong with me. So if you're going into the work workforce and you feel the need to tell your new employer that you're an alcoholic, I would suggest not doing that. Maybe, you know, maybe down a couple months down the road, but not really at the start. You want to reassure your employer that you're a great guy or a great gal and you're responsible. When you say you're an alcoholic, there's still some stigma around that. So they might go against you. What are some of the benefits of getting a job in early recovery? Well, number one thing is you're going to have some money to spend. I was broke for about six months broke. Like I was borrowing money off my father and friends. Like, can you give me 20 bucks? And we're talking coffee money, not that I smoke. Try and smoke when you only make $625 a month. It's very, very difficult. So you become more self-sufficient financially. So that was a really, really big perk. And I felt it. I felt more confident because I had some money. You begin to normalize your life. You get up in the morning, you go to work, you're off, you go to meetings you start to normalize things. And that was a really, really good thing for me to do. Going to meetings is great. It really is. And I suggest you go to as many meetings as possible, but the in-between times, sometimes you can get really bored. You can, you can get really bored. So getting a job, getting meetings, you start becoming busy in your life. You feel more productive in your life and your life becomes more fuller. So it normalizes your life. And I loved it. I loved going to work going home at night with my, at my brother's place and getting up and going to a meeting. And if I had time on my days off, I'd go to two or three meetings or go to a meeting after work. It was really, really great. I always kept recovery at the forefront of all my jobs. And to this day, it's still the same. It really is. Another thing, as I mentioned earlier, is that you start to normalize your conversations. You're not always talking about recovery. You know, recovery, recovery, recovery. Hey, that's great to talk about, but it's also great to talk about sports and news and politics and all that kind of stuff. It was exactly like my father said, it would help you start to integrate back into the regular lifestyle of everybody else. You know, I always felt that I wasn't normal when I drank. I always felt when I was in early recovery that I wasn't normal. Something was wrong with me. But going back into the workforce, the benefit of 
feeling more confident and feeling like I was just a regular Joe in this kitchen, producing some great food for people, started making me feel better about myself and feeling that I belonged in the world again. And I hope you can relate to that. I really do because working has so many benefits. It is a social benefit, financial benefits, confident benefits, routine benefits. You know, it has so many and, I, and the social part of it, we can't ignore. We really can't ignore. I've made great friends in, in, at my work. I went to the, the Christmas parties. I started feeling like I was a human being. I didn't realize that I would get so much out of working. I really didn't. I was in such a slump. I felt so unable to do anything in early recovery. So another thing I want to just point out before I end this video, always keep your recovery at the forefront of your life. Work life, family life, whatever it may be, the number one thing in your life is 12 steps, 12 traditions, service, recovery. Your recovery program. Do not let work, family, oh, I shouldn't say family, because sometimes family keeps me away from my program because I need to be there and supportive. So I'm taking that back. So keep your recovery in the forefront of your life and your job will go skyrocket. It really, really will. I've changed my career. I'm now a bus driver here in the city of Ottawa. I make terrific money. I'm self-sufficient, I have my own house, I have a nice little car, I go on holidays, I have a great, great life. But it all starts off with getting off my ass and getting out there and working and rebuilding my life, my job career, one day at a time, much like our sobriety life. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please leave a comment. If you didn't like this video, again, please leave a comment. But all he is, can you please subscribe to my channel? This is the untwisted voice of Terry G. And as usual, look after yourself because it shows. I'll see you next time. And just remember one last thing, one day at a time. I'll see you later. Thanks for stopping by.